Now, that being right. said, we got to talk about the world's favorite cow. You're a little fired up on this one here. All right, so Billie <laughs> Eilish says men don't face criticism about their bodies because girls are nice. My ass. Okay, this is the quote. Nobody ever says a thing about men's bodies. If you're muscular, cool. If you're not, cool. If you're rail thin, cool. If you have a dad bod, cool. If you're pudgy, love it. Everybody's happy with it. You know why? Because girls are nice. They don't give a F because we see people for who they are. I've never heard a louder crack of hot horse manure than that. Brian, real quick, if you could. Yeah, so this lady's just wild. Um, that being said, can you pull up the picture? I want the first picture of, uh, of Billy. So here's the deal, Miss Eilish. This is why you're facing criticism. It isn't because of the way you look. Go to the all actual the, picture. The, okay. Uh, to the right on one, the top. Right. There you go. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. All right. So this is why you have criticism. Because you're going to the mall or the grocery store looking like a booger. I mean, wh how else do I describe you? So here's the deal. Now, Brian, in comparison to that, can you show the uh, the pic all the different pictures of her? Oh, yeah. So here's the thing. You love the praise of how you look and people being attracted to uh, conventional beauty when you put work into it. When you put makeup on, when you doll yourself up, when you're going to the Grammys and everybody's taking pictures saying how beautiful you are. Well, that's when conventional beauty's fun. But when you just, and, and then what do the women say? Well, I just want to be able to go to the grocery store without being judged. My dad would beat my ass if I went to the grocery store in sweatpants. I know, a, li a little too much of a high standard. At the same time, though, my dad or my mother would not resonate at all with this position because you look, here, here's the deal. Ashton Kutcher, who doesn't catch gripe on his way to the grocery store as you did. Yeah, well, he knows better. He puts on pants, throws on a cap, maybe some sunglasses, goes through mostly unnoticed. You've dyed your head to look like a highlighter. <laughs> there is no way you're going to the grocery store without the whole world <laughs> seeing you look like a trash bag. You could look like a trash bag and slide under the radar if you didn't put a giant billboard that says, look at me on top of your head. That also being said, let's truly acknowledge this, this standard of beauty that women play victim to and are so crippled by. It is nature. And we are lying to ourselves if we believe we still live in any remnants of a world where women do not take physical characteristics into consideration. I will admit, you look at some of the older generations, there are some men who have women out of their league because they're successful and just moderately successful. They're not, they're not Elon Musk. They're just a moderately successful man that'll bring you home a meal, give yourself a child, and raise a solid family. That used to be what we looked for, but this is what we did. We took women at a very young age, a whole generation of them, and told them all these stories of, of the Fonzie that was just a male pig. Oh, you're dating the same guy I am? Every story revolved itself around how men were pigs. A. At the same a. at the same time, you convinced men to to tuck their tuck their dangling and be a little bit. We pussified men. We and 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 for the better in many ways. I, and let's acknowledge that I I'm not sitting here opining for a life where I could beat my wife. It's actually pretty good that we've gone gone such lengths to have a more even partnership. And that should be the only thing you want out of this is a team player, a partner to, to conquer the world and raise a family with. But that used to work when women were the deciders and they didn't have 50,000 strangers in their DMs that are better than you, just happen to live in a different state. The, the, the sexual marketplace has totally evolved and changed. And for you to say that, a, a sexy man in Kentucky slides into your DMs that you in any way are still entertaining or acknowledging the regular guy. That's a total lie. Finally, this is my point. You're going to sit here and say that there is no criticism and, and shallow decision-making when it comes to sexual partners 
when women are deciding in men. However, there is not a man on this planet that can find success on these digital dating apps because we can, without displaying their height, because we've gotten so shallow and height supremacist that we won't even consider any mate under six foot. And we've seen on TikTok all the women that now in interviews, one, it's a microaggression to just be approached by a stranger. You can't be hit on in public. So we're forced to these digital platforms. And then on top of it, you sit there and say that, oh, well, anybody that doesn't make $100,000 a year and is under six feet doesn't exist in my world. But we're going to pretend the rail thin guy and the dude with man boobs is just as equally a sexual candidate for Billie Eilish, somebody who could pull somebody off of an Abercrombie bag. Yeah, I'm not entertaining that position. So that all being said, what is your thought on this? <laughs> it's a lot to follow up here on. Uh, for the most part, <clears throat> so I think w with with Billie's positions, let's take the celebrity aspect out of it. Uh, let's just go. Let's just go off the words she said. The, you know, there's I think there's different levels of attractiveness a man can be. So if we all remember the dad bod phase where there was, you know, a bunch of bunch of guys kind of embraced it, loved it, uh, really, really kind of made it their own thing. That's how like chubbies became a brand. But then very quickly, women became victimized by the fear, the sheer concept of that. And so now just out of pride, strength and independence and and owning your your power, it is now a discredit to consider a man body and taking our womanhood back. It there that is nowhere near on the marketplace today. Well, I I, I disagree a little bit. Cause here's cause there's different types of again. There's different types of beauty. I think a woman uh, approaches is like you have the tall like the tall skinny kind of emo guy. You have you know your Abercrombie model. You have your you know your foot your athlete your football. So there's different levels of type of track like Mr. Clean. You know, even like being bald can be attractive. There's a lot of attractive bald guys out there and being bald is maybe part of that, that like part of their thing. That's their stick for being a bit more attractive where I, I think. So are you going to make the claim then that being bald does increase well, it can be sexual appetite. Well, it can be. I mean, it, it definitely. But it does. Like it can be. Like, there's there's all Wait, sorts of attractive bald people. Why is every man so deathly insecure of their hair? Well, because you really got to own it if you're bald. That's I mean, yeah. that's the big thing. You have to you have to own it. And it's but it's there's a, no in between either. There right? is no like in between. You, you don't get to have a receding hairline. You either throw yourself in the deep end and you have to. Yeah, because that's also a major piece that we select. And you're allowed to have preferences. Oh, yeah. But to pretend we don't have preferences is stupid. Yeah, I, but I, I I don't necessarily think I think the for the most part, part of this is probably media influence as well. Oh, totally. So you, you'd see we're starting to kind of come away from that. Now you're seeing model, you know, like Victoria's Secret models are being a little bit bigger. Maybe they're having different hair colors. They're not always they're not always blonde. They're not always, uh, you know, real thin. But I, I think the evolution of attractiveness for men, I think, follow a little bit of the Kim Kardashian. Have you ever heard of the Kim Kardashian standard? What? Giant chest and giant. No. So if, if you see over the years, Kim Kardashian has mellowed down and well, become more of a regular shaped human, more of a regular shaped human used to be. Or that's kind of you could almost see the antithesis of like the big ass came from Kim Kardashian really throwing that out there being very curvy. Then you have the lips and now she's trying to move and she's moving more to a slender frame, a little bit more ghost like not quite as a. Uh, tan you know dark and tan as she was and you're you're seeing kind of fashion move that now is that in media influence is that her under her own agency it's hard to say but it's not um there's definitely i think there's more standards of beauty when it comes to like the male attractiveness where women kind of fit under really mostly like one of probably two or three categories you can be real thin model thin you can be thick uh, or you can really what own whatever space you're in, like, you know, the, the big titty goth girl. That's starting to come back into, you know, it's the the 90s and the early 2000s come back all over again. That's attractive now. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting some head shakes here in the audience. We all know it. It's a, it's a good look. It's a real good look. There's some passionate people in the audience. <laughs> But I, but I also on the on the other hand of that as well, I, I think men's standard men are just incredibly more aggressive about going after women than women are going after men. So you have, so you probably see like, you know, 
do women really need to go after men? Not really. No, they don't. Because they're they're just we're just so aggressive going after them. Like if you but on well, so how about this? How okay. about this? I want right. to address that point directly. Directly. Because I think aggressive has a connotation and i i mean it by the literal sense of your definition okay yeah sure i agree that also being said there's a chemistry there's a nature to this whole aspect too yeah. why why are they so you ever hear and uh, excuse my language post nut syndrome we've all heard of it we all oh, know yeah. of it yep. and it's because the chemistry in a man's brain something that we all know we all can resonate is there is a switch in our brain the second we, we reach a uh, climax Right. Yep. That being said, we are driven not necessarily to find our partner all the time. Something I have disdain for my my sex is if we're a team, like where as if I have any connection to you because of that. No, but we'd share something. That being said, something I don't like in men is this like this natural fabric to them where they need to have sex yeah. and it becomes so necessary. Something I don't res relate to as much like I, but I see it in my counterparts mm -hmm. that they need it so bad. And the, the, the pool of opportunity has gotten so shallow and it's been such a long time that when we were in college, there was a guy that called it hog hunting. Ooh. We're going out hog hunting. And, and in my college, it was whale hunting. Who come out with the biggest hog. <laughs> that being said, like, we <laughs> guys are willing to lower their standard significantly oh, yeah. just for the night. And what you'll have is a group of hogs that think they can corral Abercrombie models. Then they think all men are pigs and hate all men because. That guy just needed to climax. Yep. He needed his nut and left. And the reality is you were never within his sexual marketplace. You were never in the ballpark or even the league. But this delusion is peddled because men are so desperate for it that they go down in leagues. And, and I don't like talking this higher and lower, but – the, the, the lower rungs of the female sexual marketplace get to live under the delusion that they're higher valued than they actually are because guys need it and they still get it. And this gets to why a concert gets shot up or a grocery store gets shot up and the vast majority of them are men. The, are. Because the reality is that men, that man whose psyche was broken is an incel. They are involuntarily celibate. Yeah. And you don't have that in women. You don't. They're, they Find the lowest rung you could find. That person, if needing it, walking out into the street saying, give it to me. There is someone willing to give it. But that is not to be said about the lowest rungs of men. And, yeah. and with their nature needing it as such a fabric to their existence, not achieving that end will break a man and drive them to these hellish ends, not justifying it, explaining to why we reach these ends of roads. Oh, yeah. You, you get more desperate and with that desperation just starts leaching into other aspects of your life. And that's and, and I think that's where we see the aggression just also and not even. So let's so let's say let's call aggression like you're going to a bar and you're really hitting on somebody there. She's she's not giving you any single sh signal. She likes it. And you just keep going forward. Yeah, that's that's not great. But also men are just a bit more uh, proactive about reaching out to women, seeking more women. And I, I think, well, you, you know, you've heard probably one of my least favorite talking like conservative talking points is like the male, the, the lonely male syndrome uh, where you have guys that just can't seem single men that can't just seem to date women. They can't figure it out. And all of a sudden they're. They go into drugs. They do all these nasty things, and, and I think part of it is they're, they're just like just like we talked about a couple of weeks ago that there's a lost art with Tinder uh, about having to like reach out and talk to women. It's a it's something we're just kind of like the calculators, long division. You're you're just slowly moving away from it. Now you just you're sliding in the DMs because that's easy. That's your easiest way and the quickest way to talk to women. And I think women have just seen 
I, I would love to just see some not just like normal attractive woman's DMs just on the normal. So I bet it's, well, I'm probably, sure it's terrible. It's probably every other day you get two or three people just going hey, strangers. Hey, you probably got up? the random person you haven't seen in your local community forever. And you're oh, like, yeah. oh God, way to make that awkward. And then on top of it, you've got total strangers from all across the world. Yeah. Not even gonna deny there there are real hurdles that women face on a daily yep. because of this. But I, that all being said. From 2000 to 2020, more than 800,000 people died by suicide in the United States, with male representing 78.7% of all suicides that happened between those dates, 20 years. So almost 80% of them are males killing themselves. Yep. And I think that goes back to just being, in general, more proactive. It's you're, true. you're more proactive about reaching out to women. You're more proactive about killing yourself. Uh, it's true. I'm sure I'd, I'd love to. I think the addiction angle is probably, I bet men are more likely to be addicted to things, regardless of what a gambling, sex, drugs, rock and roll, guns, whatever. They're more likely to be addicted to that than I think the in the women Do you know anything are, about that? are uh, more likely to be. Addiction. Are, are men more likely to be addicted to things than women? This is our on site doctor. <laughs> Yes. 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 Okay. Doctor that, says yes. Uh, we don't need to do any more research. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm correct. Uh, but yeah, I, I, they're just more proactive. I, I just <laughs> yeah, too. <laughs> so when you so when you see like the crime rates and all that, it's it's just more men doing it because they're more proactive about you know being involved within the, and that it goes to the best parts of society and it goes to the worst parts of society. So it's true. It's true. I guess the rock and the hard place I face is this. Something me and my sister resonate all the time. When you're talking about men and women, because we are one and not the other, Mm -hmm. it very quickly becomes a team talk. Yeah. Like when I say men can beat women in sports, I'm saying the best girl in the WNBA cannot beat LeBron. Both of them beat me. Yeah. So the, the disassociation we have in these dialogues is like, I'm not speaking for myself as a team, all of us. But at the same time, this is the problem, is when you go, all us women yeah. are really being oppressed by sexual standards, and you aren't. But I want a guy that looks like, even if it is, I want a pudgy guy that look. what if your perfect soulmate loves going to the gym? But I like pudgy guys that look like my dad and did that. that. At some point, like, you have preferences. Yeah. And – being able to make bold statements like men, men don't face this at all because women are nice. One is just delusional. Yeah. But two, like, let's have a reality check here that like you may be experiencing scrutiny around men that aren't, but to say all men don't or all men or all women are being just as oppressed. Like I'm sure Paris Hilton loves the standard of beauty as she capitalized on it for a solid yep. four decades. Yep. So that all being said, you, <laughs> she's got to be over her forties, right? Right. Uh, How uh, old's Paris Hilton? Now I, I'm curious. I, 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 if I were to take a guess, it's like 35. Up, we had some comments. Oh, um, um, ooh, I know. Ooh, I'm throwing <laughs> a lot. Hey, can you juggle three more plates? <laughs> Um, but on your point, so I, I so I, uh, 42 years 42. old, uh, so she was hot since she was two. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, okay, all right, oh, all right, so yeah, we got we do have some comments. Ooh, we got a cocktail yeah, of comments here, we got here. a cocktail of comments. <laughs> Scatner on I here, I saw the guy from CSI come up, and I'm yeah. like. Ooh. What are we doing? All right. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna try to pronounce her commenter name. Uh, he thinks you guys both look like Gary Sinus Sinus. Hey, I'll take it. Um, hey, we're both. Oh, we both look I like had, it? It's like I don't uh, see it, but he he really oh sees it. God. He sees it in the face. The face. This is this is like the the CSI opener. Uh, let's just say the guy was in a car and the car was on fire. And his charred body's in the driver's seat. That guy was cooked. <laughs> That's the beginning of my CSI episode. So, again, in wrapping, my final thoughts are this. 
I think if you just look through your narcissistic lens of your oppression, you're never going to see all the people that are also in the same boat. Whether they've got a thing dangling between their legs or not, you'll probably learn more often than not. We're probably all relating to the same types of struggles. Yeah. Whether it's in their own niche, everybody's got their own insecurities. Do you know how many times I'm just, I brought it up to you before, and it's not because it's ever on my mind. It literally doesn't exist to me, but I have a mole. The only place it exists is on the internet. And it's only when a video goes <laughs> far enough that then you've got 1% of people that are trying to find the one thing you're insecure about and they just pick at it. To me, it doesn't exist. It doesn't affect my life, but at a, in my youth, it was a struggle oh, yeah. where people would pick on it. And I, I, I would let it exist at a point where you, you either conquer your existence. I'm never going to be above six foot. This is me. Take it or leave it. And let's be real. The people that are leaving it shouldn't even be in your life to begin with. So I just, my, my point is this, you want, went to the grocery store looking like a booger and everybody around you told you, you looked like a booger. And then when you go on the red carpet and you look like a goddess in your dress People don't waste time to tell you how great you look. So maybe, last point, women love saying, I don't do my makeup for you. I do my makeup for me. And the reality is it isn't for you. No. You do it for the other women around you. So also understand you feel pretty in that dress, not just because you feel pretty in that dress. That's part of it. But also because everybody around you is telling you're pretty in that dress. So when everybody around you is telling you you look like a booger because you went to the grocery store, know that <laughs> it isn't personal. It's because uh, Anna Hall, the track star, looks like a goddess when she goes to the grocery store and you still look like a booger. That's my wrapping thought. Well, uh, I think uh, my wrapping thought is <laughs> <laughs> the uh, – so uh, when we see celebrities out there, so like just just to pull up the example you had here with uh, Billie Eilish, shows that social media and definitely Hollywood really shows your best side. You got to remember when you're looking at Instagram, you're looking on Facebook, it's your highlight reel. You're, you're not posting your most unflattering picture out there. You're huh. not doing it. You're not intentionally doing that. So when you see, have you ever seen a picture, like just someone taking a random picture of you and you go, oh my God, who's that? Yeah. Oh, What's that ugly troll that. doing over here? <laughs> that's, and I think that's one thing we always seem to forget with these types of scenarios is, well, I want people to see my best side, but I don't want people to see my worst side. And I think social media is, is definitely trained our generation, past generations, even future generations, that this is, you must always look like this. And if you don't look like this, something's probably wrong with you. So that's so I, I bet a lot of that angst just comes just from just from that touch point alone. But yeah, that's uh, it's yeah, you're fired up on this one. This is this is a hot because touch you point know what? for you. I'm insecure about my body, and I don't like you telling me that it's me. No, it's because nobody. If I just kept getting bigger, I'm going to have less people interested in me. And you telling me it's that's true. not the case is an utter lie. And 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 what you're doing is encouraging people to just keep shoving pie in their face and going to the McDonald's drive-thru and going, it's all of you, not me. But but yet I'm sure you have a personal trainer or a dietitian. So you do care about these things. You know the reality of them, but you also perpetuate on a mass scale to the youth that, yeah, go ahead. Titties are big man titties. Those are great. Those are fine. Not a problem. Like, yeah. Yeah. All right. Wrapping thought, Brian. Uh, I think Billie Eilish and most celebrities are living in a bubble, but you know, that's a, another rabbit hole. Um, Perfect point. And yeah. uh, what was that gold, gold member or yeah. Austin Powers 2 where he molded, 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 uh, in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was a gold Shout member. Out <laughs> yeah. See, we had to end on picking at my insecurity, oh. but men have no uphill battles. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching this clip from the Rethink Tank Live. Join us every Tuesday at 7 p.m. streaming across the platforms on YouTube, Rumble, X, Twitch, Facebook, LinkedIn, and TikTok. We do our best to promote user engagement, and we want you involved. So be sure to bring your perspective live so we can get you in the dialogue. See you then.